In the mid to late 1990s, several women in Ireland would disappear mysteriously. All of the disappearances took place inside a very close geographical triangle, which would be dubbed Ireland's Vanishing Triangle by the press. The most well-known case of this is probably the disappearance of Annie McCarrick. McCarrick was born on Long Island, New York on the 21st of March 1966. In January 1987, she decided to move to Ireland and live there until her disappearance on March 26th, 1993. On that day, she had left her apartment in Dublin to spend the day in the Wicklow Mountains. She was captured on CCTV in the Allied Irish Bank location in Sandy Mount, withdrawing money from her bank account. She would then do some shopping before returning to her apartment at around 3 p.m. And then, around 40 minutes later, she boarded a bus headed for Inniskerry in the foothills of the Wicklow Mountains. This was the last time she was seen, and she would be reported missing by her friends a few days later. When the God Eye first started investigating Annie's disappearance, they treated it as a missing persons case, as there was no evidence of foul play. And they devoted huge resources to the investigation, with more than 50 officers working on the case at one point. They searched large areas of the Wicklow and Dublin mountains, but they never found a single trace of Annie anywhere. One witness, a bouncer who worked at Johnny Fox's, which is a pub about six kilometers from Enniskerry, claimed to have seen her in the company of a man in the pub that night. According to this witness, McCarrick was at the pub accompanied by a young man who was wearing a wax jacket. Nobody saw McCarrick or her male friend leave the pub, and this man's identity has never been discovered. It should be pointed out that this sighting has been disputed over the years. Friends of McCarrick say that they don't believe that she was ever there, stating that she didn't really like pubs and she didn't go drinking much, if at all. For instance, Marissa Mackle, who is a friend and former colleague of Annie McCarrick, is quoted as saying, Annie would not have spent the night drinking in Johnny Fox's with a stranger. She would not have spent the night drinking with anybody. And referring to the sighting, she said, that was always to me a very unlikely story. Further doubt is put into this witness account because it seems unlikely that McCarrick would have walked all the way from Enniskerry to Glencullen, especially given that it was dark and wet outside that night. But this lead wasn't the only one. There were other alleged sightings of McCarrick where people claimed that they had either seen her somewhere or given her a lift somewhere. The investigators had to follow up every single lead, which sadly may have meant that they were chasing their wrong leads. And the case of Annie McCarrick is still ongoing. While the case of Annie McCarrick may be the most well-known of these cases, she sadly wasn't the only woman to disappear within the area that's become known as Ireland's Vanishing Triangle. The unofficial listing lists at least eight women. Here's a brief overview of what we know about these cases. On July 25, 1993, 39-year-old Ava Brennan of Rathgar went missing. She disappeared after leaving a family lunch at her parents' house in Rathgar. After not hearing from her for two days, her father would go to her apartment to check on her. He rang the doorbell but got no answer. The family owned a pub and Mr. Brennan decided to head down to get some help and a barman would help him break a window to the apartment and they then went inside. 
The jacket that Eva had worn when she was last seen was still there, but there was no sign of Eva herself. According to the family, there was no investigation of this case for around three months. And the family have criticized the investigators on how they dealt with Eva's disappearance. Eva's sister, Colette McCann, said that Eva would visit her parents' home every day and that she rarely went out. According to some reports, Eva had been depressed prior to her disappearance, but her family does not think that she took her own life. The reason for this is that she was supposedly a spiritual and religious person and she was close to her parents and as such would have left a note or a letter. Because of this, her family is convinced that something happened to her. 22-year-old Imelda Keenan on Mount Melek went missing. She was living in Waterford City with her boyfriend Mark Wall. She attended the Central Technical Institute of Waterford where she undertook a computer course for a short period. On the day of her disappearance, she had allegedly told her boyfriend that she was going to the post office and then had left the apartment at around 1.30 p.m. The last confirmed sighting of her would be when she was seen crossing the road at the corner of the Tower Hotel and Lombard Street. The person who had seen her was a local doctor's secretary who knew her well, but after this sighting, Imelda was never seen again. 21-year-old Josephine Jojo Dollard of Callan would go missing on November 9th, 1995. At the time, she was living in Harold's Cross. On the day she disappeared, she had met some friends at Bruxelles pub on Harry Street and had stayed with them for the afternoon. She went down to the bus station at approximately 10 p.m., but had missed the last bus home, so she had boarded a bus to Kildare instead and arrived in Nas at around 10.50 p.m. From there, she had hitched a lift from a driver who had dropped her off in Kilcullen, near the edge of the motorway. From there, she would hitch another lift and was dropped off in Moon. And from there, she had called a friend from a phone box and explained that she had missed her bus and was going to hitch her way home. The conversation would be interrupted briefly, and when Jojo returned to the call, she told her friend that a car had just pulled up and offered her a lift. So Jojo ended the phone call and presumably entered this car. And she was never seen or heard from again. On February 13, 1997, 17-year-old Kira Breen of Dundalk went missing. The last person to see her was her mother Bernadette, who said at the time that they had both gone to bed just after midnight. Sometime after 2 a.m., Bernadette had got up to use the bathroom. It was then she discovered that Kira was missing. She had seemingly climbed out of a window and left it on the latch, presumably so that she could climb back in once she returned, but she never did. On August 1996, 25-year-old Fiona Pender of Tullamore would go missing. The last person to see her was her boyfriend John Thompson when she was leaving her apartment. At the time of her disappearance, she was seven months pregnant. Despite the investigation, the case would grow cold, but in May 2008, a small wooden cross bearing the name Fiona Pender was found in the Sleeve Bloomway at the border between Leash and Offaly. On the cross, there was a handwritten message that said, Fiona Pender buried here Thursday, August 22nd, 1996 which, of course, has led to the belief that Fiona is buried somewhere in the mountains. One interesting detail, and perhaps an important detail, is that the date that is written on this cross clashes with John Thompson's claim of having seen her the morning of the 23rd. If she was buried in the mountains on August 22nd, he could not have seen her on the 23rd. 
18-year-old Deirdre Jacob of Newbridge would go missing on July 28, 1998. She would disappear when she was walking home to her parents' home. In fact, she was supposedly only yards away from her home when she disappeared. She was even seen approaching her parents' home by passing motorists as well as numerous other sightings, but she never made it to the house. No trace of her has ever been found and she was never seen again. Because of the detail of her being so close to her parents' home, her case is often seen as the most puzzling of all of these cases. How could she disappear when she was so close to her parents' home? and was seen so close to her parents' home. The last disappearance that would be included in the list of Ireland's vanishing triangle was the case of 19-year-old Fiona Sinnott, who disappeared in 1998. At the time, she was living in Broadway and was last seen leaving Butler's pub in Broadway with her ex-boyfriend Sean Carroll who was the father of her 11-month-old daughter. When talking to investigators, Carol would tell them that he had walked Sinat back to her home and he had spent the night sleeping on her couch. According to Carol, Fiona had complained that she was having pains in her arms and upper body, so she had gone straight to bed. And he had headed into her bedroom the next morning where she was awake and told him that she was still in pain and would go to her doctor later that day. He claimed that she had no money, so he had given her some money for a lift. He had then left the house. His mother had been waiting outside and then drove them back to her family home. Fiona was never seen again, and during the investigation it was discovered that she had not gone to see a doctor that day. What's interesting here too is that during the investigation, the police discovered that her home had been stripped bare of a number of her personal belongings. And locals would later report that they had seen a number of black refuse bags outside of the property. A local farmer would even approach the investigators and tell them that he had discovered a number of black bags in the corner of one of his fields. The bags supposedly had a number of items and documents that had Sinnott's name written on them. The farmer had mistakenly thought that these bags were a case of illegal dumping, so he had decided to burn them. It wasn't until the news of Fiona Sinnott's disappearance reached him that he realized just what those bags were. With this new information, investigators began to suspect that somebody was trying to mislead them into thinking that Sinnott had run away. Like many of these other cases, the case would still be ongoing but grow cold. But it would take another strange turn on September 12, 2008, when a memorial plaque for Fiona Sinnott was stolen from a cemetery in Our Lady's Island in Vexford. The marble plaque had been removed the night before it was due to be unveiled. In the cases of Annie McCarrick, Jojo Dollard and Deidre Jacob, a convicted rapist, Larry Murphy, have been suspected of being responsible for their disappearances. And this is because all of them vanished very close to the area where he lived at the time. As recently as October 2020, Jojo Dollard's case was upgraded to a murder investigation. A serial killer is believed to be responsible for some, if not all, of the disappearances, and Larry Murphy is considered the main suspect in at least three of the cases, as I just mentioned. He was convicted and imprisoned in 2001 for the rape and attempted murder of a Carlo businesswoman in the year 2000. He had attacked her and tried to strangle her in a wooded area of the Wicklow Mountains at night. This woman only survived this attack because two hunters had happened upon the scene and intervened. Murphy claims that he had nothing to do with any of these disappearances and he has been questioned on numerous occasions by the police. As of right now, there is no solid evidence connecting him to any of the disappearances. 
The cases of Eva Brennan and Fiona Pender have been linked to two other murders, that of Antoinette Smith and Patricia Doherty. Smith was a 27-year-old separated mother of two who went missing in July 1987. Her body would be discovered the next year in a shallow grave in the foothills of the Dublin mountains. And Doherty, who was 34 years old at the time of her disappearance, would disappear while shopping on December 23, 1991. Then, in June 1992, her remains were found by men digging turf in the same area of the Dublin mountains. And both of these cases have been linked to Ava Brennan and Fiona Pender. There is also the possibility that a number of these women were victims of intimate partner homicide by their boyfriends or ex-boyfriends. In at least three of the cases, that of Fiona Sinnott, Kira Breen and Fiona Pender, it is believed that the murder was personal and that the person responsible was someone that the victim knew well. Kira Breen went missing when she snuck out of her house one night and rumor has it that she was meeting a secret boyfriend who was supposedly married, though I wasn't able to confirm that. The God Eye also believed that Fiona Sinnott's killer was someone well known to her, possibly the last person who saw her alive, her ex-boyfriend. And her case was also upgraded to a murder investigation in 2005. Despite being linked to two other murders, in the Fiona Pender case, the main suspect is her then-boyfriend, John Thompson. An interesting detail is that more information about possibly him have been provided by a witness regarding an Irish man who is now living in Canada. According to the witness, this man had heavily implied that he had done harm to Fiona Pender during an argument and this information would be analyzed by the investigators. And I thought I should mention this too. One interesting detail in the Annie McCarrick case is that a man that's supposedly connected to the IRA is a person of interest in her case. In the book Missing Presumed by Detective Sergeant Alan Bailey, he writes that this man supposedly murdered Annie after they met in the Glen Cullen bar Johnny Foxes. Allegedly, this was not the first crime that this man had committed. He had previously been moved out of Belfast after allegedly raping the daughter of another IRA man. Then, after the death of McCarrick, he had fled to France before being helped to move on to the US. This IRA man was never tracked down, arrested or questioned about Annie's disappearance. And the God I believe that he could possibly be shielded by the IRA. While the term Ireland's Vanishing Triangle sounds mysterious and intriguing, it is more of an umbrella term for these strange disappearances, similar to the Highway of Tears in Canada. All of these cases are still ongoing, and it's possible that someone out there has a piece of the puzzle that might make a difference for all of these cases in different ways. For the sake of the loved ones of these women, we can only hope that we, and most importantly, they, finally get some answers and some closure. <laughs>